Hey guys, welcome back to Trout Town. Today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any fishing today. The weather's pretty crappy. So I've decided to stay in. I want to talk to you something kind of serious. I want to talk to you today about river safety and one thing very important piece of safety and that is knowing when the river is going to rise and fall. Now if you live in a dam regulated area and the river you fish in all the time is the flow is controlled by your local dam, you kind of want to know this information. One of the things I look at before I go fishing, and I will look at this every single time I go, is the TVA app I have on my phone. It has the release schedule for that day, and later on in the day, it'll release the schedule for the next day. Now, it's not cut in stone. They have been known to change it on a whim from time to time. But I look at the schedule so I'll know when I can fish and what I need to use. It would, I don't care if the water's up or down. It just it'll determine what tactics I need to use to try to catch some trout. And it also lets me know how much water is coming through the dam at that time. So I'm going to show you the app. I'm going to show you how I use it and how I use that information. And hopefully it will help you in your river system. But before, let me make one thing clear. Just because this information works in my river doesn't mean it's going to work in yours. Where you fish in proximity to the dam changes the information. The size of the river you fish in changes the information, the width of the river, the depth of the river. There's so many factors and variables involved. The information we're going to look at may not be the exact same flow rates you need for your river system. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I look at okay on my phone right there you can see the tva app our system is a tva regulated system now the first thing that's going to pop up here is a list of lakes now these are the lakes that are operated by the tva now i do not know and i'm trying to get a focus there for you i don't even know how okay i think i got it focused I don't know if all these are in Tennessee or not. There's a bunch of them on this list that I don't even know. I've never even heard of. But uh, over here on the right are stars. You find the one you want. You click that star. It becomes a favorite. And it goes to the top of the list. Now, you can see at the top of the list, there is Wilbur. Now, that is the dam that controls the river that I fish in the most. So, that is the one I'm going to use. So, let's just click that. Now, Coming down, quick little overview, kind of like a little disclaimer type stuff. Uh, little highlighted point here, Wilbur will be releasing at 200, 240 CFS until further notice. Now, the next part down, generation releases. Now, this is the actual schedule. This doesn't mean that they're going to be releasing necessarily, but it's the generators. This is the generation schedule. If they're going to be generating, producing electricity, this is what you're going to look at. Now, right now, it's not a great time to be looking at it because they're literally generating nothing at all. And they've been doing this for a few weeks, but I wish it had some numbers on here. It'd be a lot easier explaining this, but right now they don't. So we're just going to use what we got. So there's a schedule. There's the date, the time period from 1 a.m. to midnight and zero. So you can see that they're not generating at all. Now underneath this, now this information right here is what I look at the most. Now this is what's going on right now. And it's about a seven or eight hour scale here. And you can see it starts right there at 11 a.m. And it's every hour, 11 a.m., noon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., so on. And over here is how much cubic feet per second water was coming through that dam at that hour. And it'll change. If they were releasing or generating, it may say 245, 245, and then 1700, 1800, 1800, you know, and so on and so on until they change it. That is the information that for me is most important that is what you need to look at and the time that amount was coming through that 
down. Now, here's why that information is so important. That is the amount of water that is going to be coming your way. Now, there is a limit to the amount of water I'm willing to fish. Anything up to 2,000 CFS, I'm good. I will fish it. You get up over 2,000 CFS, and that is a lot of water. Now, for the Watauga River, that's just too much water to try to get into and fish. Uh, it'll bring debris, logs, dead trees. Everything's coming with that water. I just choose to stay out of it. I have tried to fish that before. It does not work well. Now, in your river system, 2,000 CFS might not be that big of a thing. Probably not even enough water to notice. That's why it's very important for you to get to your river system and look at your local release schedules to determine what you can fish and what you can't fish. Now, I've been doing this for years. I've been using this app for years, so I kind of know what to do. And it, it took a long time to kind of get that idea. Another thing about that release schedule, as far as how much water at a certain hour, I also know that the section of river where I do most of my fishing, it takes at least three hours. Almost, it's almost exactly three hours from the time it comes out of the dam to the time it gets to where I'm fishing. Now I know that because I've fished again, many years. I've been through this. Before I had this app, I'd be out in the middle of the river, didn't know when it was going to release. Next thing I know, water is, wasn't my knees. Next thing I know, it's up here filling up my chest waders and I'm having to swim back to shore. Not fun, not fun at all. But now I've got the app and I can prevent that from happening. So in your area, the best advice I can give you is get to the river, know what the schedule is, pay attention to the water flow at the time you're in versus when they actually started releasing and how much water was being released. Biggest pieces of information you could have while fishing in a river. I don't know how to elaborate any further on that. If you found this information helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you thought about subscribing but haven't done it yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.